about something which some people talk about, some people don't, some people mostly skip through it every single year, including me. Okay, we don't really sink our teeth into the mitzvah of what we call Sfiras HaOmer, or the counting, the counting of the Omer, which is the counting of the Omer, as we know, what is an Omer? I did have a schoolmate whose name was Omer, okay, but that wasn't it. As we know that the Omer is an offering that they would offer every single year, the new barley grain after Passover, people were not allowed to eat new grain grown until they brought this first portion to the temple and offered it. They would have to keep it, store it, whatever it is. They weren't allowed to partake. And it's really now even included today a mitzvah. Certain people are very careful. Most people, now it's more predominant than it was a few years ago with something called chadash. Have you ever, ever heard of the pro yes, prohibition of chadash? Prohibition of chadash. Chadash means literally new. So new means new grain. If there is new grain, right, and yet it's before the time of Passover, and it's in your supermarkets and it's in your flowers and everything, there's a prohibition against eating new grain. There are heterim. Heterim, which means there are rabbis who permit, not, exact, not the new grain, but they permit based on the fact that everybody has storehouses, and the storehouses are packing grain from, you can sit up here, maybe it'd be better for the eyes, because it looks like, it's right there, you know, this time of year. It's I'm good. sure in a few minutes it'll be okay. Yeah. Right. In any case, so there are, but, you know, the, the Bach is, uh, is, of course, is Machmir, and then some geniuses went and decided to go and do an investigation to see, is it really old grain or not new old grain? And so they went and brought the, brought the <clears throat> you know, opened up the can of worms, and there now you can get, go, Baruch Hashem, on lists to find out which companies have old grain, so you're okay, and then which places it's new grain, and you should not eat until the time, until the proper time, okay? Uh, so, so most people, like I say, they rely on other, uh, many uh, codifiers who say we're relying that most of the grain that is out is last year, so it's already been a year past. It's old grain, it's not new grain. But anyways, that's just a side point. So, but here we have this mysterious kind of mitzvah, and there is a lot of questions the more I just go into this, and as we know, uh, most of some, many are not familiar with it, okay? But classically what it is, is there's two different simultaneous things. One I just told you, which was, it's a grain offering. Yeah, very nice, okay. What does that have to do with counting? That we count every single day after the first day of Passover until Shavuos, we count seven sets of seven for seven weeks. Okay, we count every single day. Today is the first day of the Omer, today is the second day of the Omer, and we count each and every single day. Okay, we should really hand out those Sidurim. Are there any Sidurim here? Yes, there are. We'll get them in a few minutes. Okay. So, because, but basically, the mitzvah is the first night after Passover that a person stands up, because the mitzvah is to stand up and do it, okay? And count and make this certain counting every single day. And normally, what it is, is first of all, let me ask you guys what, what, what do you know about it? What do you know? Why are we counting? Right? Because it says so in the Torah, right? And we talk, we talk, we, I think we touched a little bit on this. You were saying that, uh, how, how do you, uh, you gave one analogy, that uh, the Leo Shimurim was Cinderella went to the ball and met the prince. Okay, very good. And then we're counting towards the Chuppah. Right. Okay, good. At least Cinderella knows there's going to be a chuppah, right? Yes. In our story, right? Yes. The rabbis doesn't have to do with achieving the highest level of holiness, and each day we're supposed to learn something. Perfect. Right? I'm, Perfect. See, I'm, you know, I'm not as advanced as everybody. No, right she here, actually, so. she really did really quite well just now, okay? That's really amazing, okay? Because, yes, okay, in, a, in, a, in, in the general scheme of things, okay, the Omer is for, and here is, here's the language here, 
that it brings down, okay? Kedei laharot benafshenu es hacheshek hagadol lamatan Torah. That means in order to show in ourselves the great desire for the giving of the Torah. Okay, classically, as a person who's going to get married, he's counting the days until he gets married. Yeah. So it's a, it's a yearning, cheshek gadol, great desire, ali halavai, halavai, which means if it can only be that we would be like pining away, looking forward to Shavuos, okay? Because most people are so busy these days, it's like, okay, you know, uh, yeah, Shavuos is coming. Okay, how many people do I have to cook for? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is, like, who's coming? Uh, not, oh, okay, wow. Well. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> another hog, another holiday. I just, oh, I just got through this one, man. Give me a break. Okay. But really, of course, what it is, is like we said, the analogy of Cinderella on Seder night was going to the ball meeting the prince, right? Awesome time. She disappears, leaving a slipper. Of course, we can't forget that glass slipper. Okay? And then, of course, she disappears, and he doesn't even know her name, right? And then he goes around the kingdom, trying on the shoe to everybody, which really is like, and we know that in a Midrash, God did take the Torah and go around to all of the peoples of the world, offering them the Torah. And they go, you know, what's in it? And, of course, the shoe didn't fit. Okay? because they had six toes, or who knows what, okay? Whatever reason, it didn't fit, until finally, on the wedding night, on Shavuos night, which is supposed to be the wedding night, the, the, the ultimate connection, okay? So here is really supposed to be a build-up of a connection, to show in ourselves the great desire for this thing. Now, most people don't even have a connection to what it is by Matan Torah, okay? Okay. Yeah, we got the Torah, Baruch Hashem, and that was like thousands of years ago, and we're going to commemorate, commemorate the giving of the Torah. That was thousands of years ago, and, you know, and, and, and that's the holiday, and, and that's it, right? But, of course, it's never that. In terms of our all Kabbalistic tradition, it's the exact same energy as we know that the way that the cycle of the year goes, it is like a spiral, okay? That means every single point on this spiral is that day of the year, and at each and every day on the spiral, even though it's not the exact same day, it's still in a, in, a, in a vertical position. It meets that same day, which means it means that same energy, which means that same energy is there. Just like we say, the exodus from Egypt was not, it did not cause the holiday of Passover. It was the time that caused the holiday of Passover, the time of renewal, the time of spring, the time of new life, which that was why... The holiday of Passover always has to be in springtime, okay? Because it's the time caused the, the event, as Rabbi uh, Tatz says, okay? All, it's always caused by that. The Torah caused the event, okay? And the time caused the event. So the same thing by Shavuos, by Matan Torah, the giving of the Torah, which a really person has to really start to really contemplate is what is the Torah, Okay? Because most people think, okay, it's a bunch of rules, instructions, it's really great. Yeah, okay, how many people do I have to cook for? Okay, so, <laughs> in any case, okay, you have to think about it. And if a person is really in sync, and he really understands about what this event of Mathan Torah is, and what happened, he can actually hook in to the same energy of Mat and Torah. And therefore, when you hook in to the same energy on this, at that day of Mat and Torah, so then you get all of the illumination of Mat and Torah and that whatever happened on Mat and Torah. And you know, there was big, huge stuff. Okay? I was thinking today. I was thinking today. This is a wild... I'm going wild here. Okay? I'm going outside the box here. Okay? But nowadays, we can probably relate to in this more way. Imagine if somebody who you really trust would tell you, you know, we're going to work on you. We brought you out of the out of the out of the out of the ashes of Egypt, and we're going to make you a mutant. Okay, we're going to make you have certain powers that are above people. We're going to we're going to make you fly, or 
we're going to make you give you the ability to read minds, or we're going to give you the ability to have whatever, some kind of added ability. Okay, flying is pretty good, right? Or be invisible, whatever it is. Okay, you can imagine it. You can go there. Okay, wouldn't that be cool? Yes. If somebody you knew could trust who can deliver it and do it, that would be okay. So we're in 50 days. We're going to prepare you, or you have to prepare yourself because in 50 days, this is we're going to. Like every day, we're going to inject you with a certain serum, and then you're going to turn into something, okay? Something superhuman, okay? Cool. You don't, you're not into it. <laughs> I'm no, I, I like my car. I don't want to fly. I like my car. Okay. Imagine that you you would. Yeah. You would be gonna, you're going to be endowed with an unbelievable gift. You're going to look forward. You're going to yearn for it, and of course. The person who's going to get, give you this gift, he says, okay, you have to prepare for it. Because otherwise, you know, everything's got to be right in order for this tremendous gift to work. And that's what it was. Amat and Torah, they became free of death. Free of death. We will make you immortal in 50 days' time. Okay? Dude. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> and, and then you will also have a certain level of independence from the external forces, okay? You'll be free from certain influences which you would, can, that nobody else is free from. More, most people, most mortal men are not free from, okay? In other words, you're going to become the eagle that you're destined to be, okay? I told you guys the mushal of they took a baby eagle and put it with chickens, and what did that baby eagle do? Pecked like chicken, right? Until they taught it somehow, or educated, or I don't know how, to tell it that you're an eagle, you can fly. Well, we're 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 yeah. we're, on, we're on we're on planet chicken. Didn't you know that? <laughs> <laughs> this is planet chicken, okay? <laughs> but we're not chickens, okay? That's the problem. We're on planet chicken, okay? It's meant to be. Okay. So the idea really is of Matan Torah, this unbelievable gift. Of where you're getting the code, we're giving you the codes, we're giving you the, the map, we're giving you the, the map of the spiritual realm, and you could make all of reality is like putty in your mind. Okay, we're going to give you mind powers beyond. Okay, so of course that's going to be something to anticipate, wouldn't it? Yes. Okay, think about it. That's what the Torah is. The Torah is an unbelievable tool. It's an unbelievable vessel. It's an unbelievable cleave for an unbelievable connection. Okay. The thing is, people don't contemplate it much. We don't, okay? So that's the first thing about Sefirah to Omer, about the counting is. The interesting thing is that the counting should be the other way. It should be, okay, 30, 30 days till I get married, 29 till I get married, yeah. right? right? Has anybody ever heard an answer to that? Mm-mm. Okay. Right? That's right. It should be the opposite. Right? But Why is it this? Up to ah, because the, okay. Up. So that gets into the idea, the, con, the, the idea that we discussed about by the forty-nine levels of Tuma. that the, the Bnei Israel were sunken right before the whole exodus from Egypt. They were entered into the forty-ninth level of Tuma. and Hashem, of course, did His awakening from above to bring them out, rescue mission, because they were. If they would have filled that 49th level of Tuma, they would have been gone. But of course, we know that this unbelievable revelation of light that God was doing on Seder night, you know, the, the fairy godmother, Moses, brings Cinderella to the ball, you know, wasn't Cinderella's merit, okay? It wasn't Cinderella's awakening from below. It didn't really, you know, it was all what's called, we call an awakening from below. It was a freebie. And then, of course, like what you said, you touched upon, then becomes then... But we're, so we're still, in a certain sense, you could take the man out of Egypt, but you have to take the Egypt out of the man. So therefore, each and every day of these 49 days that we count, there's a level of Tuma being taken away, and a level of Tahara, of purity, being given in. It works the same. Flip one, and, then, and the other one is, is given. Okay? That's why it's like a 49 days. This one is stripped, and this one is given. Okay? So it's a 49-day count. That's why it's like in that level, because we're going up levels. 
we're getting up to levels of purity, building within ourselves a vessel. And it has to become be an awakening from below. It has to be from coming from us. Okay? It started really at the splitting of the sea. The splitting of the sea was the beginning of a complete redemption, in a certain sense, because the splitting of the sea didn't split until Nachshon ben Aminadav, a person, went in up to here. He walked into the sea, right, with the right attitude, the right frame of mind. He had total imuna that we're going to sing about this. He was in what we call the Oz zone, okay? It's called the Oz zone, according to the Bardich Barebi. He was like only envisioning a complete, total miracle. He didn't know what kind of miracle, but he's walking and going, we are going to sing about this. All of his kishkas. And so therefore, the sea split because of his zone moment, his Oz moment. That's why the song that we sing after is called Oz Yashir. Mm -hmm. Then Moshe sang, but then is not a past. The then Oz is a future. It's because of the, the Nachshon having the quantum thought, the quantum emuna. He was already there, right? Therefore, the miracle happened in the sea split. Okay? That's according to the Bartit Okay? So that began, though, of course, what we say, the awakening from below. It has to come from us. We have to participate. Otherwise, we can't, it can't be a freebie. We're not into freebies. We have to make our steps forward. So then from then on, even really before it started, after the second day of Pesach, we do these counting. And it's so easy. I had a dream. This guy was in, me, was, was in my house, and he was going to teach me a home workout plan. And uh, I had to take my tefillin off, and then he's talking you know, with some of the members of the family, and saying, you know, just a little sometimes, once you just hit the right easy little move step, then everything flows. Once you just take it, then everything flows, right? That was Nachum, actually. Right? I was like, yeah, Nachum, let me just take off my tefillin first. Because he was already like, unless you got to do push-ups like this. Okay. <laughs> and he's talking to my wife, and, all, and, and he said something really profound. That like, you know, sometimes when you just shift things just a little bit, just a little bit, and all of a sudden, poof, everything falls into place and everything flows. And that's what Sphere at the Omer is. Because really, if you think about it, it's not a really huge event that we're doing. We're just saying something. We stand up at the nighttime, three stars, and we just uh, make an utterance. And the Arizal brings down a long oriklus. The simple air that comes out of the mouth at the count does tremendous rectifications. Just the simple counting. Now, of course, if you didn't count, with the, you could count with a bracha. We know some of the laws are together. If you didn't count with a bracha the first night, so then you don't continue counting with a blessing. You're not, you, you shouldn't, according to the most uh, of the... Uh, of the codifiers, right? If you miss the night, you don't count with a blood. You, but you keep counting. You must count, even if you miss the night. So you don't stay with a bracha, but you have to count. It makes a huge difference, okay? You still must count, okay? So, the, but of course, you have to develop in that idea of when you count, you know, it can't be just a count. Yeah, I got to go. I have a lot of dinner, so I, I got to cook. <laughs> okay? Um, which is like, that's me, by the way. I'm like, in the middle of dinner, run to Min Hamari, got to go back, okay? So, um, you have to kind of contemplate for a minute about what is the potential of what can be, who you can be on Shvuos night in terms of your potential, in terms of the development, in terms of you and your actualized state. Who are you? Okay? You have to kind of visualize, you kind of look forward to it. Yeah, look forward. You have to yearn. The yearning, this is what he says, Cheshach HaGadol, the great yearning builds the vessel. Okay, it's not, it's, a, it's great, okay, it's enough to count, so you fulfilled it. But of course, there's the deeper thing, which is that yearning part, because the yearning, the looking forward, that builds the vessel. Every, a lot of things in mitzvot are based on preparation, and the more you prepare, the greater the light. You are making a vessel to receive the light. That's what it's about. Okay? So, and we prepare ourselves in the whole length of this time in purity. 
the days of the Omer, Omer, Yemeha Omer Rabu Malasam Lamala Rosh. These days are unbelievably high. Unbelievably high. You wouldn't think it. Why? Ki yesh b'kol yom, koach shel shmone yamim mehashana. In each and every single day of the Omer, it has the power of the eight days from the year. Eight days from the year. Who can help me with that? I think I have an idea. He doesn't say. The eight days from the year. Koach shel shmone yamim mehashana. Okay, you can say eight days of Hanukkah. Hmm. No. Each and every day has this power. Then what I'm thinking is this, is you have Passover, yeah, it's is two days. Mm-hmm. Shavuot is one day, Sukkot is another two days, that's five. You have Rosh Hashanah, and you have Yom Kippur. So in other words, if you take all of those days and squish it into a day, each day of the Omer is like that. It's like you're, you're Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, you know, you got your mind. Don't try to enact it. Shake the lulav, eat the matzah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sit in the sucker, shake the lulav, eat the matzah. Do the cooking. Okay. <laughs> Cook for 20. Go on, shaking the lulav and eating matzah. Okay. 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 But the idea really is there is a power in each one of these days. And, in the, and actually, you'll notice that my beard is a little longer. Okay. That we're not allowed to do haircuts. On these days, on these days, we're not allowed to go to have weddings, to listen to music, unless you're a, a, a person who has a, a you know, a, a inclination for depression, and, and music just helps you to fall from falling into depression. Okay. Are you serious about that? Hmm? Are you yeah. kidding? Or are you serious? We don't. We're not allowed to listen to music. No, but these I mean, you, if you're a person who's depressed and that makes. I know. You I know rabbis who gave uh, certain students uh, oh, really? uh, permission. Oh, okay. To listen. Not, you can't go to live play. music. Right. The real Isser is live music. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Right? You can, no symphonies, no orchestras, no rock and roll bands, no Bruce Springsteen. And they would all, it was, the weird thing is, they'd all play in the Omer in Israel. Right? I had this, this valley there, Sultan's Valley, Sultan's Pool, where they had this concert arena. And they always had the Jethro Tull was playing. They had all the good ones playing in the Omer. I'm like, well, just, that's great. <laughs> you know? Not that I'd go to see them anyways, because like, how dare you? You know, everybody else would burn me at the stake if I would even think about it, right? But of course, the other guys would go, you know. Um, somehow they would already... <laughs> not that you call that music, okay. It's, in our days, you're right, that's new. Compared to anybody now, what do they call a purple mushroom or infected mushroom? I mean, that's not music. It's okay. a guy with a flute. What? Yeah. That's right. well, a Jethro Tull. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so in any cool. case, whatever. I rem- I just happen to remember that. It was always like that day they'd have these whatever, you're not allowed to listen to music. You're not allowed to weddings. Yeah, we, we we're not allowed to cover cut our hair. Now there's different reasons why we're not allowed to do that. Most people think most people are under, you know, it it, it does bring down that we had in this period of time twenty four thousand students of Rabbi Kiva who died. This great sage, Rabbi Kiva, who was the leader of Am Yisrael at the time. Huge school, 24,000 students, and all in the 33-day period died of the same disease. Because Hashem really wiped them out. Okay? They weren't giving each other kavod. They weren't respecting each other. Right? They, they didn't have the right attitude with one another. Okay? And because of that, and that's when Rabbi Kiva came out with a big phrase of Loving your neighbor as yourself, this is the big rule of the Torah. Loving your neighbor as yourself. Anyways, so that one, most of the people say the reason why we don't have mute weddings, we don't listen to music, we don't cut our hair, and there's other prohibitions also, uh, is because it's like almost like a mourning. But the Ramban, Nachmanides, says no, it's like Cholomoed. Cholomoed is the days that are in between the festivals. You'll have the first day of Passover and the last day of Passover. You'll have the first day of Sukkot and you'll have the last day of Sukkot. And you'll have what's called, we call the days in between, which are considered to be, we call it hall, like non-holy days, but it's in the Moed, it's in the season. So in the hall of Moed, we're also not allowed to necessarily uh, cut our hair. Okay? And weddings, no weddings. Okay? In those days. Can't have a wedding in the, in the holiday. So he says it's a completely different reason. It's not a mourning thing. 
it's it's a long, this whole 50 day period is like a big whole Hamoe. In other words, there's a it's a very auspicious time. The power of these days is unbelievable. We have to harness the power. You have to be able to hook in to the power of these days. Okay? <coughs> he says they're like Yacholamoed. Okay? Vagadol Mikol Kihem Shorsh Lakolyamotashana. And the greatest of all, he says, that they are the root of the all of the days of the year. And these fifty days is the root of all of the rest of the days of the year. How you behave. Okay? In these days, your behavior is going to like set your behavior for the rest of the year. Is that scary? Very. Well, Adam, in the way that a man behaves in them, and, the, and you'll see, you will be tested. If you haven't been tested already, I was. Okay? Still tested. Every single moment. I'm not every moment, but... Okay? But in the way that a man behaves, right? Kat. Thus, he will behave all of the year. Okay? Until, but, but the point, the, pro, the potential is that a person can actually destroy from himself completely his evil inclination on these days. That's the potential. You can remove all of the dross that is within your soul. Fortunate is the person who behaves in them with holiness. And according to the Asfas Emes that he just quotes here, Asfas Emes brings down later on an unbelievable line. These are his words. Somebody who guards or keeps the Svirat Omer and the holiday of Shavuos properly he does not need to come in judgment on Rosh Hashanah. Go figure. Go figure. Did you ever hear that anything like that before? No. Neither have I. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was like, okay, Sierra, don't come out here. I can't wait. I'm counting the days till I can shave. Okay. Instead of like, no, no, no. There's a deeper thing we have to get into. There's a much deeper thing. Okay. Okay. So, so, of course, what he says is, before that a person accepts this great gift, which is the Torah, because this is all days of preparation for the gift. And it's not the gift, it's you are getting a gift. There is a gift given for you on this day. The problem is, right, usually we don't even, you got to now use your consciousness to prepare, Okay? You can hook into this. You can hook into your level of soul, to a greater level of soul of yours, okay? And have an unbelievable greater insight, an unbelievable level of maturity, an unbelievable level of expanded consciousness that will stick with you, okay? But you have to work on it, okay? However, so before that he accepts this great gift, a person has to pass by the Nisayon of three <coughs> days, and it is a test, okay? I'm telling you, it happened. Motsi. As soon as Passover went out, all of a sudden I was hit. Some people, they were two huge, um, what we call it, dramas, critical moments, whatever, crashes. Two, two places, my daughter had a crash and somebody else had a crash. Conflict. Conflict. Because if you don't, if you can't contain the light, it usually ends up in a, a shattering of the light. Okay? We call it nisayon, which means test which basically means an opportunity to express potential. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> and there is in his hand the ability to stand in it. As he fixes his character traits properly, because these are the days of fixing a person's character traits. But the, the, the tikkun amido, the fixing of his character traits on in order is not easy. However, in these days, a person can reach it, can re have, he has what we call siyat at He has a great help from heaven. So I remember Rabbi Niven, he would tell us, pick something you can do in these days. Something simple. Don't, don't go big. Something simple <coughs> that you can do on a daily basis. Just a little advancement. Whatever that is. Pick something. I picked something, right? I picked... The, uh, there's a law that you should uh, 
you know, to wash your hands by your bed, right? Which, you know, usually everybody has the, the heter, has the, the um, permission. You know, as long as they're in the same house, you can walk to the bathroom and wash the nearest sink and wash your hands because we have to wash our hands every morning, neglavasa, okay? The holy people put it next to their bed so they don't even have to walk six feet, okay? So, like, something simple like that is an example. One year I did that, right? Or something, whatever. It could be anything. You have to pick it because you know, and you have to pick a baby step. It's something you can do every day because now is the time. And if you make that step, you make the little baby step, okay? So then Hashem will bestow upon you great things, okay? Kishorshi an hagot anikraim sefirot because the roots of how God behaves, He drives the world, are called Svirot, as we have learned, are revealed in these days. Okay? So the way that at this tikkun that is sought out for us is when a person will contemplate that every single mita, every single character trait and nature that he has within him, there is a certain, it is rooted, there is a certain grasp in, a, in, in the spiritual realm of his root, okay? That in this, these upper spherot that we've learned before, we've learned the ten spherot, right? Yes. Now maybe you don't remember them, right? Audrey, you skip, skip a couple of classes, you have some makeup tests. Make up uh, I do my homework at home. Okay, no. yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm a slow learner. And I get, once I get it, I get it. Okay. <laughs> so there is a certain grasp in the root. Every single quality, every single character trait that you have, it is rooted in something higher in the cosmic realm. Okay? Shibisvirot ha'elyonot, then in the upper svirot, in these upper illuminations, the ha'kesher, and the connection, the shorish zeh ha'nikra svira, the tiv'av umirasav shel ha'adam, mizbarim bezor ha'kodesh ba'alfech arachim, Okay, we've gone through many, there's many, many, many texts in the Zohar, in the Holy Zohar, in terms of what is the nature of these Svira that we've already investigated to some degree, okay? But he's going to bring, let's say, examples of them, and that's what we're going to go to a little bit now, okay? Because i got to give you some examples of them, okay? Of course, we have the magic box, and we have the pen that is in the box, and hopefully the pen works. Do I have to get bets? Who's placed your bets? Is the pen going to work? No. <laughs> uh, yeah. Don't jump to the gun. I haven't gotten to the fourth sphere yet. It's going to get light. Okay. It's on the side. That's it's why working better now. Okay. I'm gonna, if you up and down it, it'll be better. Okay. Yeah. Good. So we have basically what we have, as we know, we have the ten sphere, oh, these are the ten illuminations, this is the form of, of uh, this is the godlike form that God made man in, okay? And these are the ten midot, character traits. We've learned this before. The first three are called mental spherot. It's Keter Hachmabina or Hachmabina Dat, whatever you want to say. These are mental spherot. We don't get into that because those are not, those are not mida, character traits. This is Musr, okay? Kabbalistic Musr, okay? What we have here is the lower ones, okay? And the lower ones, as we know, this is called kindness. This is called uh, gvura, we'll call it discipline. We'll call this beauty. E-E-A, beauty. We'll call this dominance. We'll call this empathy. We'll call this connection. And we'll call this malchut or kingship. Okay? So these are really the seven spherot that we learned before. And we learned that the, the seven tzaddikim who embodied these. I, Abraham was kindness. His tent were open all four sides. Isaac, Yitzchak was discipline. It was very low key. Beauty, Yaakov Avinu, combination of both. Uh, Moshe Rabbeinu, dominance, he comes down from the mountain, hears the law. Empathy was Aaron, the peacemaker. He'd hear this side, that side, and make peace. Connection is really uh, Yesod, is really Yosef, because he overcame his sexual desires, and only then, right, 
was he able to be the conduit of all of these, the connection of everything above it, in order to bestow to Malkut kingship, which is King David. Okay? King David was the, the ability to give ultimate glory to the divine through a kingdom. Okay? In any case, though, as we know, in each one of these, we had a subdivision. It subdivides, right? So in other words, in each one of these, you have a mini ten, sphere out. Okay? But of course, we're not going to count the first three. So in here, there's also seven, right? Okay, so if you, if you count the seven, just the lower seven, seven times seven is? 49. 49. So oh, yeah. this is the 49 days of the Sphira. Mm. And we're starting from up here. And the 49 gates. Of course, the 49 gates. Wow, wow, wow. So this is day one, and we move through seven days of the week, and we finished week one. Then we go over to week two, week three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so we're going from top down. And we're counting each one of these days. Each one of these days is a sphera of a sphera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Inclusion of the other. Okay? So, let me go here, here. So let's say, okay, the first day of the sphera, we know we're in the sphera, in the general sphera of kindness. Mm -hmm. Right? But then we have, within kindness is kindness Discipline, beauty, dominance, empathy, yesod, right? Malchut. So therefore, we call the first day kindness of kindness. That's the address. It's an address, a certain way to look at it, in a map form of the spiritual realm. Kindness of kindness. Chesed shebe chesed. Chesed shebe chesed. Okay? And then the next day would be, right? Gevura shebe chesed. Mm -hmm. Or we call it discipline of chesed. It has its own blend. You see, all of a sudden now, I understand it when it's kindness, it's very simple. But now we're getting into a blend. We're blending like this with this. What is, what is gavura of kindness? What is that? How does that represent? How does that express itself? Okay? What does that mean? Okay? We say it every single time. You know, in interestingly enough, if you've ever gone through the sitter of where Sphira to Omer is, okay? First you have this L'Shem Yichud Kud Shabrihu, okay? Which, you know, I mean, I even the Ashkenaz like, sitters have it. Can I ask you a yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Gavua and Givura, it's not the same thing at all, right? Gavura, Sheva Gavura? Gavua and Givura, it's not the same thing at all. One of them is pride and... Oh, ga gaava. Ga ga gaava. Gaava. Gaava no, is pride. Okay, never mind. And no. is just power. power. Oh, good, yeah. Ultimate power. 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 Yeah. That's how you it's 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 power. For sure, it's, it really is. It's power. power. Because if you can restrain from being angry, that's real that's, power. So yeah. 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 Okay, so you're going to give us an example of how this happens. Yes, we're going to work through it, okay? okay? We're going to go through this step by step, slowly, slowly, okay? Okay, so just to give you, just like, I really should here, so like, if you go into the sitter, if you have any, an art scroll, it has actually on the page here, where it has right next to it the sphera. Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> Nobody else in Houston has a clue what this is. <laughs> <laughs> Except for maybe Rabbi Yacobian. <laughs> yeah. And Rabbi Masri. Okay? <laughs> Nobody else has a clue. <laughs> okay, that Feel... Okay, close the door. Okay? <laughs> Page 314. Your arch crawl sitter. Even art school doesn't have a clue what it is. Okay? <laughs> but they wrote it down yeah, because they, they have to. Somebody told them to. Because the editor said better put it in. But, but, put it in. But, okay. <laughs> in any case, so you have the very first day is Chesed Jibbe Chesed and it works its way down. Until Malchut Sheva Chesed. And then you conclude with week one. Okay? And then, you could, and then you'll go to week two. We're going to do today. We're going to do tonight's Sira. Okay? Because why not? Mm -hmm. Okay? 
Okay? Oh, that's so exciting. We have a crowd. We're going to be more clueless than when we came. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> I guarantee it. So are we in discipline now? Are we past seven days? We're in Gavula. We're, we're in week two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, you're not allowed, allowed to say what the night is when it's nightfall, because if you said what night it is, then you've already considered to have counted, and then you cannot count again with a blessing. You probably know that. That's why everybody in Shul says, what was last night? Because they cannot allow to say what tonight is. Because if you go, what's tonight? Oh, it's 15. It's not 15. If it's 15, you just counted. You can't yeah, say a bracha. No, you just said that. Okay? No, it's not. Don't worry. It's not nightfall yet. Three stars haven't come out. Saved. Saved. Okay. So, Gavura is week two. Okay? So we start off with, right? Chesed Sheba Gavura. Gavura Sheba Gavura. It's a lot of power there. Watch out. Then you have Tiferet Sheba Gevura, Netzach Sheba Gevura, Hod Sheba Gevura, and tonight is going to be Yesod Sheba Gevura. Yesod, which means foundation or connection of Gevura. What is that? How does that? What, what do I do, Rabbi? Help me out here. Okay? So, thank God we got a couple of books which help us because really I'm also clueless. Okay? I know what Gevura is. I know what you sow it is. It's just putting them together yeah. <laughs> into like, how am I supposed to behave? What can I do with it? Okay? So here is a great book by Rabbi Yaakov Haber called Siros. Okay? Right? It's a good one. It's great, but what? Siros means what? Siros. Siros means like counting, like you're counting Siros. So he goes through, and he probably got... Okay? So he goes through what today is. I won't say the name because it's really getting close here. Okay? Uh, he says today is Yesod Shiba Gavura. Okay? So he says, I'll just read it to you. And first of all, he goes to the explanation, and then he goes to the different three relationships that a person has to go ahead and work on and utilize the energy of the day to build in himself that vessel to receive the gift on the 50th day. The, to re re shed himself of the impurity, that gate, of the 49 gates mm -hmm. and receive a new level of purity on this same day. But he needs to know ahead and know the program of the day. If you don't know the program, okay, you did the mitzvah, you counted, mazel tov, great, okay, you're the, with the rest of the blue pill takers, okay? <laughs> We're red pill people, okay? <laughs> okay? We're trying to be red pill people, okay? Believe me, if anybody knows, you know, I wanted to like, you know, the two pills, red pill. So you have matzah in one hand and a bagel in the other, okay? <laughs> <laughs> matzah is the red pill. Shavuos is the red pill. This is the red pill, okay? One of the highest achievements a human can attain is to become a tzaddik. A tzaddik is someone whose goodness is not superficial, but rather is integrated deeply into their foundation. Okay, and really everybody has that inside of them. Everybody has a side of that inside of them. Yes, you do. Maybe sometimes you fall and you fall out and you get, but you know something? We do have it in, within us. Yes, even you, Audrey. Especially. Okay? One is only considered a tzaddik when he has disciplined him or herself in speech and areas of sensuality. After Yosef resisted the wife of Potiphar, he was called a tzaddik. Okay? So it's discipline also in the area, okay? So Yesod Shiva Gavura is achieved when a person has intrinsically changed for the better and uses all of their strength, strength for goodness and holiness, okay? So here's how he goes. He has then three action points, either with God, between you and God, mm -hmm. or he has with you and other people, how to display this Gavura, Yesod Shiva Gavura, foundation of power, okay? Or with yourself. Three relationships. There's only three relationships in the world. You and God, you and other people, and you and yourself. <coughs> so he says, one is with Bain Adam, with, with, between you and God. Interesting laugh. You're going to love this one. Don't, believe, don't be, do not be flirtatious. Got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Which means try not to gaze at what is not yours. Simple. Something that's not yours. Of course, with women for men and men for women. Okay? 
take a step towards becoming a tzaddik, which means you are restricting yourself, you are committed. This, I say connection, really also means, where's the pen? I lost it. Okay, I'll use this one. Let's take bets. Does it work? Okay. It'll work. Sort of commitment. Okay? Commitment. Okay? Because you so it really is committed. Okay? <coughs> so really what it is is when a person is totally committed, so that makes the person a tzaddik. When you're when you're out, you know, when you when when a man husband and wife are in the chuppah, what are they doing, right? The Shekhinah comes down, and the chuppah is a, a limited canopy because this person is now limiting his relationship. This woman is now limiting her relationships. Now they are bound to each other, and they're committed to each other. Okay? That is righteousness. That's when you only start to see God when you do that. Okay? It seems that it should be the opposite. Let's expand to everybody in the world and love the entire world. No, it doesn't work that way. When you limit yourself into the square inch, then God can show you himself, okay? That's between with man and God, okay? But with others, gavura is structure. Gavura is structure, discipline. Yesod is represented in family. Organize things so that your family will eat at least one meal a week together on a regular basis. How many people do that? Okay. Shabbos. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try it during the week. Shabbos is an easy one. Well, it doesn't count, huh? Right, you got to shut off your cell phones. You can't watch TV. You can't drive your car. You're not going anywhere anyway. Sit down and eat your chicken. Okay? It's the easy one. Okay? Even though it's really not necessarily so easy. Okay? Because the teens want to get out of it. Okay? Um... In any case, the idea really is, you, to, we got to get the idea of it. The concept here is good discipline and, the con- and connection. We're going to make a discipline a- action of a con- that's going to manifest a connection. How do we manifest a connection? Sit down with a family, make a rule, and that we're going to have a meal once a week together, no cell phones invited. Okay? Cell phones go in the bucket. Okay? Good luck with all that. Another one is stop yourself from being, I don't know what this is, you guys got to help me out with this. Stop yourself from being dupli- duplicitous. Oh, duplicitous. Yeah, what does that mean? Um, two-faced. Yeah, two-faced or, you know, being a liar. If you hear yourself saying something which is not really you, pause and realign. Yeah. Again, if you hear yourself saying something which is not really you, pause and realign. So, there has to be a certain where. You have to be uh, um, authentic. Sincere. Authentic and sincere with yourself. Mm -hmm. So the idea of discipline and connection is that way in terms of your attitude between other people. With yourself, if you need to discipline your child or rebuke someone else, be sure that you derive no personal satisfaction. Weird how it would manifest like that, according to him. Okay? You can't like, my Greg finally gave it to him. Right? You can't get satisfaction, okay? Right? Like, right, right? So, but because the idea really is in terms of um, connection, which is really has to do with well, a sexual. We always, well, we always want to be right. You know, it feels good when you put somebody back in their place and you want to bring them. That's not good. I understand that. But then there's always this other element called happiness versus being right. Most people choose being right versus being happy. Okay? So, uh, to each his yeah, own. Yeah, very interesting. Okay? <laughs> Okay, that's his take. Let me just read what it says here, okay? Because he might say the same thing. He might say, maybe he got it from here. I don't know. I didn't even look into this yet, okay? Rabbi, do we know which day of Sephira was the splitting of the sea? Sure. Wasn't it, um, if this is day, the second day, the first day, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, it was Yusod of Chesed. Yeah, interestingly enough, because really they say that uh, the, they had the bone, the bones of Joseph <coughs> caused the seed to split as well, which is sowed. Okay. So he says here also he brings the same thing. Maybe he got it from him. It could be. Okay. A person should place to his heart that in order that he should merit to see Hashem, there is to him 
to grab the quality of a tzaddik. I guess he's getting it right from him. I'm going to assume that he's getting it right from him, even though he doesn't really embellish who much. Is him? I'm sorry. The one who wrote this sefer is called is Daniel Free. She's the one who, one who did the Mitok Midvash. He, we don't, they don't have the Zohar here, but he wrote many books prolifically in, in Kabbalah, modern day. He, he died recently, not too long ago. So anyways, it seems like, I didn't, because I didn't check it in here, that he basically, uh, looks like he took from here, except for, luckily, he didn't embellish so much, okay? So he says, okay, it has to do with Shmir Tabrit, because we find by Yosef, after the Nisayon of Potiphar, right? So then he was uh, able to be called a tzaddik. Bahid al and he testified on himself in front of his brothers. I fear God. So he was able to go ahead and reach his level of awe of God, his relationship to God, through him being that that certain level of what we call restraint. Okay. Further, he should place to his heart So there is the the idea of a person has to to be able to uh, mend his relationship with his desires. Everybody has desires, okay? The question is if the desires is out of balance. So the idea here really is has to be a balancing of desires. That's what today is about. Okay. For example, sometimes Masha Amru Suudas Shanascha Mishoch Yadecha Mimena. A Suda that is your pleasure, you should stay your hand from it. In other words, sometimes a person he has to do things. He has to make do it in an action to the effect where go to a place where you know there's going to be food and don't eat. Hmm. That's like a, that's what an action would be today. Okay? Or let's say you go to the certain restaurant, your favorite place to eat, and usually you order this, this, and this, but instead you'll just order this and this. Mm-hmm. Little, little step. Little step. Okay? A little bit of restraint. Okay? Every single time that a person holds back a desire, it's considered to be, you know, uh, like like a uh, like a fast. Even if it's just a, you're you're just you're not doing dessert. I'm gonna go to this restaurant. I'm not gonna do dessert or whatever it is, right? Or usually I order the mugu pie. I'm not gonna order the mugu pie. Okay. He should make an uh, effort to stand wherever there was an opening, a breaking in a fence. In other words, he has to fix, fence, fix fences for himself, whether it's for himself or whether it's for other people. Okay? In other words, there's a time to re- do some introspection in terms of building a fence or making a fence for yourself. That's what today is about. Okay? So he says here an interesting thing also between Madden and his friend. When he is a person is married to have actually guests in his house, he should see that he should repeat and to reveal in, in their mouths, or they should have something in their mouths, some kind of divrei Torah which has some kind of elevation of uh, the awe of God. Okay? Pulot Gvuro, to speak about God's powers. Because really when we speak about, like we said earlier, that when we speak about the Midot, or these qualities, it's God's qualities. God's quality of compassion, God's quality of, let's say, power or discipline, restraint, mm-hmm. right? Has all of these different um, nuances to them. These subcategories, subdivisions, sub-expressions, okay? They all have sub-expressions, and, it does, and it's a limud. We just had an example here of different kinds of blends of putting two... This, this subcategory of Yasod, Sheba Gvura, you know, it's a kind of a blend. Listen, we might know it all, we might not know it each and every day, but to, to contemplate it, or at least to know it, or at least to go over it every single day, or get yourself one of these books, the or God. The Kaplan? The counting of the Omer, those uh, spiral bound long things, they have that. Oh, yeah? The, the, um, oh, yeah, I have, I have one of those books, the long one. I forgot to bring it, I have one of those too. 
you know, but those like that's kind of much more surface thick. It's very, it's not. They're good because it's something you can grab. You need to grab something. You need to grab an idea. Okay, you got to like invest in the idea, even if you can only invest in the idea in a general scheme. Okay, it's a discipline week. The week is a discipline week. I'm going to make fences. I'm going to try to keep those fences. And then when you get into the idea of beauty, Torah, that's Torah a week. I'm going to mistake, I'm going to take five minutes to learn a little bit of Torah every day, right? So then, you know, and then when it's Netzach week, so, you know, you'll do a little bit of something that has to do with the quality of Netzach. You don't have to be exact, but you just got to try to get yourself in alignment with the energy of the times. Because when the more you're in alignment, the more we make the vessel, okay? And it's about the vessel that we're working towards yearning, yearning, yearning for the giving of the Torah, which is now this giving of the Torah for us, now that we've had this class today, to beginning now, to awaken within ourselves, right? A, a special looking forward. Because for us, we're red pill people. We're getting the red pill in 50 days. Okay, less than 50 days now, right? We're in, right? right? We're getting the red pill. You will get the red pill. I don't know about everybody else, man, because they're on, they're, you know, the blue pill people. Okay. Okay. They are going to still going to be pecking like chickens. We're God willing, we're going we're to fly like eagles in, in, in a matter of days if we work on it. Okay. God willing, I'm going to continue because, you know, I didn't have time to make copies, but there's these other prayers that go with it. Yes. There's a lot of mystery around this. I'm, I'm just starting to read the books now because there's a lot of mystery. We have to say the 42 letter name. I have a book this thick just on the 42 letter name of God. We say it after every time we count the Omer. We say also, Lam not said, we say, right? We say Tehillim 67, Psalm 67. Also, every time we read the Sphere to Omer, why? Why, why, and why? Okay? So we got to get into what is really about and how can we <coughs> build in ourselves a greater vessel to receive greater light this coming Shabbat. All right? Any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Go for it. Simple question. You said before that if you don't say the blessing on the first night of counting the Omer, that you can't ever say the blessing again 